1811, James Monroe was just beginning his fourth term as governor of Virginia, fourth term as governor of Virginia, when he accepted the appointment as secretary of state in the administration of his friend, James Madison. Now, as we all know, this marked the start of the family's residence in this building. And that continued even after Monroe's election to the presidency in 1816. He had to, because as we know, the White House was not exactly habitable at that time. The damage caused by those pesky British in 1814 was still being repaired. By June of 1817, President Monroe was taking it to the streets literally, embarking on a 15-week tour of the northern states. He traveled up the East Coast from Washington, D.C. to Portland, Maine, west to Detroit, and back to Washington via Ohio, western Pennsylvania, and Maryland, totaling some 2,000 miles. Ostensibly, it was about inspecting military installations, but the tour really became a celebrated procession greeted with bands, Militia units, speeches, even the, the children of the communities put out on the street, lining the streets to welcome the president and to cheer him in. One newspaper described the tour as ushering in, wait for it, an era of good feelings. <laughs> yeah, there you go, that's the payoff. Thereby bestowing an enduring nickname for the Monroe administration. I'm contractually obligated to say era of good feelings every time I'm in the public. <laughs> Monroe traveled on horseback. Uh, in U.S. mail wagons, he even was the first sitting president to use a steamboat for travel. Um, and it was a grueling pace, They'd going to all these towns, doing four or five speeches a day at its height, traveling in, in not the most comfortable conditions. But this situation produced one of the rare humorous comments we can attribute to James Monroe when someone asked him how he was able to keep up with all this. He said, a little flattery will support a man through great fatigue. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, you know, some of the enthusiasm from those national tours is captured in this march by German-born violinist and composer Charles Friedrich Huppelt. It was composed in 1817 and is appropriately President Monroe's March for the Piano Forte. <laughs> December 7, 1824, he acknowledged the revolutionary theme that inspired him and the variations on it that characterized his career. I cannot conclude this communication, the last of the kind which I shall have to make, without recollecting with great sensibility and heartfelt gratitude the many instances of the public confidence and generous support which I have received from my fellow citizens in the various trusts with which I have been honored. Having commenced my service in early youth and continued it since with few and short intervals, I have witnessed the great difficulties to which our union has been surmounted. From the present prosperous and happy state, I derive a gratification which I cannot express. That these blessings may be preserved and perpetuated will be the object of my fervent and unceasing prayers to the Supreme Ruler of the universe. 